Well, I think it's a big question, of course, but uh, the answer, I think, is fairly straightforward. Um, most countries like to rule themselves. And the real problem is that 70 to 80 percent of our laws now come from Brussels in two forms, uh, either as directives or as regulations. Regulations we can do nothing about, we just have to do them. In the case of directives, the government of the country has to put into law what Brussels has told them to do in their own way. Add to this the fact that politicians, therefore, are not really supposed to say this is Brussels. They're simply saying, it's my idea. Um, if I might touch on a sensitive but I think important issue, indirectly speaking, the issue of a gay marriage is one of these. Uh, although it doesn't come direct from Brussels, it comes from the European Council, which is basically in cahoots with them. And Mr. Cameron suddenly had a bright idea that as a Conservative, gay marriage was a wonderful idea. Um, that's just an example of the way in which this works. But the truth is, it comes from, in effect, from Europe, not from Britain. Britain doesn't want it, um, but Mr. Cameron says, we're going to have it. So, this is, I mean, I'm not a financial expert, so in a way I can only answer rather from that perspective. I need to say that. But my sense is that Europe is not a free market. Britain, in principle, has always operated on the free market principle, including the financial industry. The taxes that Europe wishes to impose on banking, on exchanges of um, whatever it may be, as I understand it, are something that our financial industry does not want. Um, having said that, something I may say later on this afternoon is the fact that big corporate organisations rather like Brussels because they prevent competition. Brussels regulations is what they rely on to stop the more nimble competitors from actually doing something. Now, as I said, I'm not a financial expert, so that has to be taken with that in mind. I think the answer would probably we would get out. Um, what with the UKIP success uh, uh, yesterday in the elections uh, and a sense of solid success, not a sense of ephemeral success. Um, a reminder of Mrs Thatcher uh, with her funeral not so long ago, um, who for all her many complications was greatly respected as the funeral showed. I sense a feeling of we want out of this organisation. Even Mrs Thatcher, too late perhaps, wanted out. Uh, Mrs Thatcher had accepted the Single European Act, which was a bit of a mistake, and she realised it too late with her famous no, no, no speech um, a little later. Uh, certainly fighting against windmills, I may sort of tilting at windmills, I think you mean, um, which is the actual expression that is fighting something that we can't win. Um, the answer is I think we can. Uh, whether there is a referendum or not is as may be. With the success of UKIP and a majority or a good half of the Conservative Party being strongly Eurosceptic despite their leadership, plus within the Labour Party, those who are Eurosceptic, it could well be that a coalition could form in the next couple of years which would be a majority for simply to repeal the European Communities Act which got us in in the first place without a referendum. If there is a referendum, I, don't, I doubt Mr Cameron could get it through Parliament. He would be opposed by some of his party, he would be opposed by the Lib Democrats, he would be opposed by the official Labour Party because it would annoy the Conservatives. So I don't think he can even fulfil that promise. So I doubt we'll get one, but I think we could get a majority in Parliament that says we will repeal the Act. And that would sort the problem without any further difficulties. Yes, no, I, I, there's no difficulty there. Um, there's no question that they have let us down. Um, they, are, they blow with the wind, they're what they call weather vanes. When the wind blows one way, that's the way they go. The wind blows the other way, that's the way they go. Uh, as somebody nicely put it in a, a nautical way, um, the Labour Party is steering its rudder towards the left. Um, other party, perhaps the Conservatives, is thinking of steering towards the right. But the trouble is the coalition has been switching its rudder from left to right and it's fallen off. <laughs> so it can no longer steer. Yes, I think if, for whatever the complicated reason, I would give Mr. Brown, in all fairness, the credit of keeping us out of the euro. Um, but 
I think the logical step from then on is to withdraw from the European Union and continue in amicable trade. They want to trade with us. We are happy to trade with them. They're a sinking market. They're not a growing market. Uh, the growing market is in the wider world, which at the moment, under European regulations, we have to negotiate with them for trade, whereas we could do it on our own. Um, I don't think so. Um, I think the uncertainty, the fear, is generated by those who want to keep us in. I think if we did it, actually when the dust had settled very quickly, we'd soon get sorted out. Uh, there are plenty of civil servants, plenty of lawyers who can unpick the mess. Um, we pay them a lot already. They can carry on for a bit and then we can sack them. <laughs> um, I think Britain is an independent country and I would love to see France and Germany and Austria and Switzerland is an independent country. Spain, just be independent countries, getting on with one another as democracies, which is the best arrangement, trading with one another, um, and so on. I am so um, that's the way it is. I, I, I can't see there's an issue. But you